let us look uh, at this question on uh, coordinate geometry which is an excellence question where you had to do heaps of things okay so let's read the question the plan of a townhouse is shown with a school at minus 400 150 so this is a school I've written s for school minus 400 150 the hall is 100 100 450 this is the hall and the end and the park entrance at 300 minus 250 so this is 300 this is minus 250 okay park the church lies on a line of point that are equidistant this is a difficult line to understand the church is on a line that are equidistant from the school hall and the park now this sentence basically means the church lies on the perpendicular bisector of the line segment sh so this sentence so let me do a star okay now this means i'll explain that later this sentence means the church lies on the perpendicular perpendicular bisector of line segment sh okay now that is what it means which are equidistant from the school and the hall now what is a perpendicular bisector so i have discussed this i'll first discuss perpendicular bisector a perpendicular bisector is a line sorry perpendicular bisector of a line segment is a line that passes through the midpoint of the line segment and <clears throat> also and also and also forms right angle at the point of intersection so <coughs> excuse me uh, that's the definition of a uh, perpendicular bisector that the word itself tells you the meaning it should be perpendicular and it should also bisect the line segment it should be perpendicular to the line segment and should also be the bisector so i've drawn a line segment now this is my electronic ruler so this is a line segment of 10 centimeter and this is five so this is the midpoint okay so i've drawn the midpoint so this line is perpendicular so this is the midpoint so let us name this a uh, line segment a b and m is the midpoint of a b that's the first thing and this line is also forming right angle okay and if that is the case and if you take any point on this line segment and join it with A and B, we can say that we can prove that these now this line becomes the line of symmetry. The line perpendicular bisector becomes the line symmetry of this triangle. Uh, symmetry okay, or, or axis of symmetry or the line of symmetry. This is acts like a mirror line. Okay, so so this this is enough to prove that these two triangles are congruent okay or this you can say that this a b this is say o i can say o a is also equal to or is always equal to o b and if you take any point for that purpose if you take join sorry if you join this point with uh, Suppose if you join this with, say, any point here, and join again with this point, these two line segments would all again be the same. Uh, I hope you understand what is this. So this will be equal to this. They're equidistant. So any point on this perpendicular bisector would always be at the same distance from both the endpoints. That's the second point. Any point on the perpendicular bisector is at the same distance from the endpoints of the line segment. These are the endpoints. A and B are the endpoints. So these two facts are important for understanding this question. Okay. So the church lies on the line of point that are equidistant from the school and the hall. And that's why I'm saying the church is on the perpendicular bisector of SH. Okay. And the second part is and is as, as close as it could be 
to the park entrance. Okay, I'll come to that later. So first let us find the midpoint. Let us find the midpoint because for perpendicular bisector we need the midpoint of SH. Okay, what's the midpoint of SH? So that is simple minus 400 plus 100 divided by 2 and the y coordinate would be 150 plus 450 divided by 2 which is minus 300 divided by 2 is minus 150 and this is 600 divided by 2 is 300. So the midpoint is this is minus 150 this is minus 150 so this point is the midpoint okay so i'll call that m which is the midpoint so this and this are equal i can say sm is equal to mh and i want to draw the perpendicular bisector uh, so let me draw a perpendicular bisector it uh, i'm presuming the line looks like this okay so yeah I have to move this slightly. Move this slightly. Okay. I think that's fine. Okay. So this is a perpendicular bisector. I think I'll move this slightly to this side. Okay. So this is a perpendicular bisector. Uh, and because this seems to be forming a right angle here. So this is a right angle. And that's why I'm saying this is a perpendicular bisector. Okay, so now the first thing is, okay, and what's the next part? M is as close as it could be to the park entrance. Now, what does that mean? That this, the, the church can be anywhere on this line, but it is, uh, is uh, placed in such a way or is placed with the park in such a way that it is closest to the park. So, indirect, indirectly what they're saying is, P is again uh, is exactly opposite to the park. Sorry, the park is exactly opposite to the church. That's what they're trying to say. So let me show you. So to let me draw a different notation here. So what does this mean? This and the second part of the sentence means. So let me draw this. Very difficult to understand. The second part of the sentence is the church is exactly facing the entrance of the park. That's what it means, facing the entrance of the park. So the church is exactly, so the church, the entrance of the church, sorry, the church and the entrance of the park are perpendicular to each other. That's what mathematically we can say. So this is also forming a right angle. So this basically what this in this example it's in a in a condulated way they have explained that these two SH suppose let me call this a PN. I hope you can understand this line is perpendicular to this line and also perpendicular to PN. Okay, so let me write that. Uh, so this is this is P. So basically, they are, from this information, I can say SH is perpendicular to MN. SH is perpendicular to MN. Okay, so you can say line MN is perpendicular to li line segment SH. And line segment PN, this is PN, is also perpendicular to MN. So using your logic, you can understand these two are parallel. So I can say SH is parallel to PN. So this is an excellent question. So this is what they want you to think. So basically, now we are going to work this out. So we'll need, we'll use most of the graphic calculator to work the equation of this line. So first we'll have to find the equation of this. If you know the equation of SH, we can write the equation of PN. So let's start. I think we'll do this in two parts. 
uh, I'll complete this example in the next part. See you in the next uh, video.